realise we do need to make a start. Has anyone seen Vicky? Where is she? Sorry about that, was getting a little carried away. I'll be up in a minute. Welcome to the scenic Anglesey racetrack in Wales and thank you so much for joining us wherever you are in the world for the launch of the Bentley Continental GT Speed exclusively for members of the Bentley network. Now you will notice that we're not wearing masks as we have had all the necessary tests and are safe in our Bentley bubble. Now, we will be having a Q&A later on, so please do submit your questions during the presentation. And I am delighted to be joined by Bentley's Chairman and Chief Executive, Mr. Adrian Hallmark. Hello, Adrian. Hi, Vicky. Now, we were earlier together on the track in the new car, and I'm not quite sure who had the biggest grin, you or me. Oh, as I said, the grin size is less important than the lap time. Uh, and as usual, Vicky, you beat me. <laughs> now, we will be hearing a little bit more about the car later on, but this is your second product launch of the year. It's only March and proving then that you haven't let any of the global issues get in the way of anything. Yeah, I mean, we've had to deal with a lot like most of our customers and colleagues have around the world. But um, we have a great range of cars that we've launched in the last two years. But this year, uh, there are nine different derivative launches. As you say, this is the second of those uh, nine series of activities. First one was the Bentayga Hybrid uh, in the new generation form, and we're very optimistic about how that will go. Uh, but of course, this one, it's the, the pinnacle of our range in terms of performance, uh, the Continental Speed GT, so we're looking forward to it. But also this year, um, in, the, in the month of March, we will build and deliver our 200,000th Bentley. Now, put that in context, the company was formed in 1919. Um, by 2003, when we launched the first Continental GT, we'd built and sold 44,000 cars. And in the next 17 years and a few months, 200,000 is the number, so over 150,000. Three times more in the last 17 years than the first 85 or 84. So we're on a great trajectory. And the other factoid, especially for the UK, more than 84% of the cars that we've ever built and registered in the UK are still on the road today. That's what we call sustainability. Yeah, they are amazing numbers indeed. Now, as well as having an active start to the year, you've also had a successful one because you recently announced the 2020 financials and you have shown a profit. Yeah. Clearly, the purpose of any business at some point is to make money. <laughs> and uh, we, we planned last year for a record year. Uh, we'd done some great work in product launches in developing the new generation of cars. And we were set with a huge order bank and a great optimistic outlook for 2020. Had a record Jan, record Feb, and then COVID hit. So our priorities switched completely. And they turned from growth and success into protecting our workforce, keeping everyone COVID safe, shutting down the factory as quickly as we could, protecting the supply of components in and customer orders going out, and then trying to get the business going again. And at one point in the first half of the year, we thought we could be into three digit million losses. Um, we did close for seven weeks. We then got back to work. We were one of the first in the UK to close because we could see the problem coming from Europe. We were one of the first to open and in a year, we've not had one case of COVID passing around the factory. People have had it, but not catching it in the factory because of all the protocols we put in place. We're really proud of that. But the eight weeks closed down and the seven weeks running at 50% of normal capacity completely destroyed the year. And the fact we still made, to, made a small profit, I think is incredible and a testament to the whole team and pulling together. 
Yeah, absolutely. Now, when we last met, it was around a festive fire, and a question you asked was, what would you like as a Christmas present? And you very selflessly said, a Brexit deal. Now, you were obviously on somebody's very good list, because a few days later, that's exactly what happened. So how has Bentley made the transition? Yeah. So um, we took Brexit very seriously, and uh, we have a, a motto in the company that we like to panic. <laughs> but we like to panic early and very slowly, rather than leaving everything to, to the last moment and then running around like crazy. So we've panicked for two and a half years. And our team, they, they do find it annoying when I say we managed it with ba barely a, a, an amount of fuss in the company. And that's only because they all <laughs> <laughs> identify what could go wrong and kicked off huge amounts of work to mitigate those, those risks before they happened. And we've had no disturbance. To give you an indication of the scale of change that we had to go through, um, to build our cars, circa 11,000 a year, we keep components in stock around the factory. And those components can keep the factory going for two days. So we have two days parts in stock to keep the, the cars getting built. We ramped that up to 21 days by the middle of January this year. 21, 10 times more stock than we'd normally carry. So anybody in business knows what that means. But that, as a cost to us, is a few single millions of pounds per year. If we stop the factory for a month, it's 100 million pounds a month. So it's a small price to pay for continuity. We also, with every single supplier, hundreds of them around the UK and Europe, we had clear plans of how they'd manage customs in the case of Brexit, how they'd manage their raw materials coming in. Uh, everything that we had to do, we made sure they were doing too. And touch wood, we've not had to stop production since we restarted in May last year, apart from the regular holidays. And how are things looking for this year? I hear that the order books are bulging. Yep, thank you to all those that are supporting us. Um, but the, the, the launch of all of our new products has really stimulated incredible interest in the brand which is stronger than ever, I would say. The cars are better than they've ever been in every dimension. Um, we started last year, 2020, with the strongest order book since 2003, when we first launched the new GT generation. This year was 50% higher on the 1st of Jan than last year. We are 30% higher in sales in the first three months, the trend rate, 30% more customer deliveries, and the order income is higher than the order delivery rate. So I hesitate even saying it. We're set for a good year. Um, but we thought that last year. <laughs> now, yeah. we don't think the COVID could hit us the same way as it did last time because we're much more prepared. We've still got excess component stocks. But some of you may have heard about the silicon chip shortage around the world, not just for cars, but for all kinds of devices because of problems in Taiwan. The, the main source of silicon chips around the world. So anything can happen, but the fundamentals that we can manage, the products, the quality, uh, and the demand generation, and the appeal of the brand, uh, we're in good shape this year. Now, uh, in the midst of the two major challenges that we've spoken about, Brexit and the pandemic, you announced arguably the biggest transformation Bentley has ever had, the Beyond 100 programme. So how is that going? Um, it was a big commitment for us. So if you haven't heard of Beyond 100 before, it's all about electrifying everything that we sell by the middle of this decade. So some form of electrification, plug-in hybrid being the most uh, known uh, technology. Everything to be fully electric by 2030. We already have a carbon neutral factory since two years ago. And we also, by 2030, want to be completely carbon neutral, not just the factory and the products, but the whole supply chain. This is a once in a generation challenge and opportunity. And the, the consequence of this is, by default, it means we won't be building combustion engine cars after 2030. Now, for a 101-year-old company that has been renowned for 6.75 litre Molzan engines, and 12-cylinder engines in our current modern cars, the most successful 12-cylinder engine sales of any brand in the world in the history of the car, 100,000 since 203 across all models, we're saying it's the end of engines, and it is. Why would we do that? Well, there's three factors. Um, first of all, it won't be overnight. So like today, 
there will be more combustion engine exciting products, nine of them this year, uh, and lots more to come before we get to 2030, point one. Point two, if we look at customer feedback, more than 50% of our existing customers that participate in our survey every year uh, have stated they are looking in the next three to five years to get an electric car and they'd love an electric Bentley. So we're not playing to a minority of our customers, we're playing to the majority. But it doesn't mean to say they only want an electric car. So we're not saying we hate combustion engines. What we're saying is we'll carry those on for a decade, but we're going to ramp up electrification and we're not frightened of being the leader at switching to full electric and the, because of the third factor, which is Bentley. Um, most people that buy Bentleys don't buy them because they're very noisy. They love the sound, but they don't buy them with big sports exhaust. And I'm sure there's some people out there saying, well, I do. <laughs> but that is not the majority. I like that as well, yeah. but it's, it's not the majority of our customers. Most of our customers love the effortless torque, effortless performance, long distance capability, refinement, noise attenuation, that feeling of cocooning and relaxation. But it still does 207 miles an hour. It's an amazing paradox. Ultimate exhilaration, ultimate relaxation, one package. That's what Bentley does. Perfect with electric powertrains. The torque is linear. Uh, the, the quietness and refinement is perfect. We embrace it. But in the meantime, we're gonna celebrate combustion engines and hybrids and Bentley as a, as a brand. And let's look back now to 2003, because there was another celebration there that was when you first launched the Continental GT, and that definitely changed the face of Bentley, didn't it? It did. I think back then, before 2003, we were selling 800 cars a year, uh, and we identified an opportunity for this wonderful brand to basically redefine a segment. Uh, and the Continental GT uh, was the turning point for us as a business. Uh, if you think again, 44,000 Bentleys between 1919 and 2003, 44,000. And since 2003, we've sold more than 80,000 Continental GTs, just GTs. The GT is almost twice as big as Bentley was when we launched it. Bentayga is going to be even bigger, but that's another story. So the GT is the, the kind of the, the image pinnacle of our brand. It's the ultimate combination of relaxation and exhilaration in one package. And there's no better example of the Continental GT in that sense than what we're here to launch today in the form of the speed. Yeah, absolutely. It is time, I think, that we show the, the latest evolution of the Continental GT. So, Adrian, could you please make the introduction for us? With great pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honour and pleasure to be able to introduce to you the new Bentley Continental GT Speed. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Continental GT Speed. And to tell us more about it, I am now joined by Dr. Matthias Raba, who is Bentley's member of the board for engineering. Hello, Matthias. Hi, Vicky. Nice to meet you again. Lovely to see you again. And I have had the pleasure of driving <clears throat> the car around the track earlier on today, and it is undoubtedly agile around this track. How have you done it? Can you tell us a few more details? Yes, Vicky, it is, and we love it. Yeah? But before saying that, uh, I have to say you that from my opinion, and I think you will, the audience will agree to me, the Continental GT today is the perfect combination of driving comfort and agility already. Yeah? That means you can go 1,000 miles with that car, you step out, relax, and you can even go on a track. But the speed brings all that to the next level. 
Yeah? And the next level is even more agility and even better handling. And there are basically there are two drivers to do that. One is the steering. That means we added a rear wheel steering and with a totally new setup in order to, um, to, to, to uh, make the wheels turning in the, in the opposite direction, low speed, or the same direction, high speed. That means you get agility, but you also get stability. That's one thing. And the other thing is torque vectoring. That means we can distribute the torque or the, the power individual to each wheel and therefore we can steer the car. You can do it when you hit the throttle and you can do it also when you release the throttle. And that's something you feel is absolutely great. And that's what you felt probably. Yeah? But there are some more uh, small things. Yeah? There's, for example, we have also a rear uh, lock differential and electronic one on the rear axle in order also to, to distribute the power better. We have an advanced ESC. You can switch it partly off. That means especially on a racetrack to have a little bit more, more fun or a little bit more freedom to drive the car. And we also improve further the, the chassis setup with a dynamic ride, really to stabilize the car even a little bit better uh, together with the air spring system. And all that together brings that recipe, which we absolutely like. A cracking recipe indeed. Yes. Um, and you've managed to add this extra ability, but without sacrificing any of the refinement. So can you tell us about that? Yes, exactly. Because basically we, we kept the comfort side. Yeah, that means we kept the comfort side, but we spread it more to the sport side. That means the spread is larger. And then with what I just was saying on the, on, the, on the steering and on the torque vectoring, we made the car really feeling much more agile. And that's, that's basically, that's all. But with a good refinement, that brings really to the outstanding comfort which we have today, then really this more sporty side. Yeah. And I just would like to, to say at home as well, if you've got any questions, then please do write them in the box and send us your questions because we will be having the Q&A session in a few minutes' time. And Matthias, if you will excuse me for reverting to being a motoring journalist for a moment, yeah. um, one thing that I was really impressed with about the car was when it comes to hard braking and hard cornering, the car stayed so level. And also, you know, you can have a lovely bits of oversteer and it was really controllable. So yeah. how have you done all of that? Yes, basically, first, Vicky, I have to say, we did all really to, to keep also, also in that situation the driver really on the safe side. Yeah? That means with all with the ESC and with all with, with the torque vectoring, we, we try to really to enhance the driver, to support the driver. But it's right, if you, for example, switch the ESC in the first stage, <coughs> then you can really get a little bit of drift and you even can switch it at least on a racetrack, not on a normal street, you can switch it totally off. And then you have a very well balanced car, very predictable, very nice and nimble handling. And uh, to be honest, that's for me, it's the ultimate GT Bentley ever had and, and, and has presently or in future. And uh, no, and that brings it all together. And, and you are right, that's the Bentley really you can drift with. Yeah, I think you experience it in yeah. the morning. I, I also, and it's really fun. Yeah, it's, it's so, so nice and so easy to handle. It's really fun. Yeah, my kind of Bentley. Yeah. Now, your team also worked on the iconic W12 engine. So can you explain a little bit more about what's been done there? Yeah, we, we, we love the 12 cylinder engine. Adrian mentioned that yeah, we have sold more than 100,000 uh, over a lifetime. And uh, we mod made it even more powerful, this engine. That means uh, we have a 4% increase in power. We have now 659 horsepower with 900 newton meter of torque. And that gives really an extraordinary, uh, fantastic power, it's a very sovereign, drive, effortless driving, as we like to say. Uh, but it's also the most advanced 12-cylinder in the world. Um, it has uh, this power refinement, but it's also very economical. Yeah? That means we have a cylinder deactivation. We can deactivate one bank of that engine. Yeah? That means we can deactivate six cylinder uh, in a partly load, which uh, really in, in, improves the fuel efficiency. And uh, all that makes that engine really outstanding. And then we also recalibrated the engine gearbox in order to have faster gear changes to be more sporty, but also seamless on the, comfort on the comfortable side. Now, last time we met, Matthias, it was at the launch of Beyond 100, which is Bentley's vision of sustainability for the future. So how does a new W12 6-litre car fit into that? To be honest, we think it fits really well. Yeah, because it's a, I think it's the cleanest 12-cylinder um, engine you can buy. It's a, it's a very clean combustion engine. And, and we are on a long road to beyond 100. We fully believe in beyond 100. That means we will have the cars. Today we have some cars already, or we have uh, this, this plug-in hybrid version. We will have more this year, more in the coming years. 
uh, we will um, have our first battery electric vehicle by the mid of the decade and we will have all cars 100% electrified by the end of the decade. That means by 2030, but it's a long, uh, long, long journey. It's not a zero or one. Yeah? And we are totally convinced in Bentley that means with clean combustion car, it definitely makes a sense uh, to, to have also a future or to have the way to the future. And the GT Speed is definitely the celebration of that, of the current Bentley. It's a pinnacle of the Bentley and uh, brings it really to the future. And I have to remind, uh, this car is uh, built in an absolutely carbon neutral production plant. Yeah? That means it's really also sustainable. Yeah, and what other ways are you working on to make this car more sustainable for the future? Yeah, as I said already, we think this car for a combustion car is pretty sustainable, but one major factor which is relevant for the future is that we also, on the total circle, that we look also for um, for synthetic fuels, um, especially um, made, made of water and of, of sun energy. And uh, this synthetic fuel would, would really could, could reduce the CO2 or the carbon footprint of, of an internal combustion car significantly to nearly zero. And that's something we are working on that. And, and the good thing is, yeah, Adrian mentioned that more than 80% uh, or 84% of our built Bentleys are still running. And that means also that car, this nice speed, I'm sure this car will run for a long time. And with a uh, with, um, synthetic fuel, with a carbon neutral fuel, uh, you can uh, approach all our Bentleys, but in a little bit broader view, you can approach all running ice cars in, or internal combustion engine cars in the future. And that means that's relevant for us. We are looking for that. We are searching for that. And probably in summer, we can tell a little bit more details about that. Great stuff, thank you so much. And that concludes the engineering side of things. But the GT Speed also has style to match the abilities and we caught up with three members of the design team who are going to show us some more details. Hello, my name is Crispin Marshfield. I'm an exterior design manager here at Bentley Motors. And I'm proud to introduce to you today the new Bentley Continental GT Speed. Okay, so the Bentley Continental GT has always been defined by three key exterior lines. That is the fastback roof line, the power line over the front wheel, and the haunch line over the rear wheel. But with the speed, we've introduced a number of subtle but effective enhancements that really amplify the muscular character of the car. Starting with this new sill, with this strong three-dimensional section that catches light and really pins the car down giving it a very sporting stance. And also we have a new speed badge on the front fender, making the car instantly identifiable. So the front of the car features the typical unique Bentley face with the four round crystal cut headlamps and the large rectangular grille. And the grille itself features a unique new dark tint finish to the matrix for both the upper and lower grilles. So the most obvious new feature to the exterior of the speed is this new 22 inch wheel which is an evolution of previous speed wheels with its multi-spoke design, but it now has this kind of twin spoke design with a chunkier section. And the wheel is available in dark tint, as seen here, or bright silver. This car features the gloss black wheel finish, which perfectly complements the black pack, which replaces all of the chrome trim on the car with a gloss black finish instead. So the combination of all of these design elements help make the new Continental GT Speed the ultimate Grand Tourer. I'll now hand over to Darren Day, who'll take you through the interior design. Hello, my name's Darren Day and I'm Head of Interior Design at Bentley Motors. So Bentley is the only car company that uses its badge as inspiration for the interior. These wings on the Bentley badge inspired the shape of the wings. So this trim and badging is unique to the speed and like all Bentleys can be further enhanced and personalised if desired with a choice of 15 main hide and 11 secondary hide colours and of course you get this amazing unique speed colour split on this interior. The enhanced design of the new digital dials on the dashboard and the speed logo usage appears when the engine's turned on. Sports pedals and speed tread plate plaques are also a standard, packed with exquisite detail, a technologically advanced instrument panel and of course the acclaimed Bentley rotating display. The new driver focus model widens the Continental GT performance credentials. So I've taken you through the interior design now I'm going to hand over to Maria, who's going to tell you all about the colour and trim. My name is Maria Mulder and I am Head of Colour and Trim at Bentley Motors. 
The Continental GT Speed has a unique colour split which is offered with both Hyde and Alcantara. We also have an Alcantara steering wheel. So we have a striking dark tint engine turned aluminium which can be offered with our new open pour veneers such as the dark stained burr walnut, crown cut walnut and koa. These can be selected. As you can see, there are three stunning metallic paints on display here. Candy Red is a sporting red with an incredible depth of colour. This hot red has a complex combination of ingredients that can create a molten, almost liquid effect that looks like it's been poured over the body, a discerning twist on the traditional candy finish. Julep is a diverse combination of colours that have been blended together to create this warm green gold of julep. The metallic gold tempered by subtle undertones of green, it adds a distinctive edge to this eye-catching Mulliner paint. Verdant is a modern metallic interpretation on British racing green, which is synonymous with Bentley race cars in the 1920s and 30s. The unique and more purposeful styling applied to the exterior and interior of the Continental GT Speed firmly positions the car as the most powerful, performance-focused interpretation of the ultimate luxury Grand Tourer. Oh, thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. That is it, sadly. If you do have any more questions, then please go to your Bentley comms team. So thank you very much indeed to Matthias and to Adrian for your insights. And thank you all for joining us. It's really lovely to see you all. And if you have any more, um, any more things that you want to go and look up, then go to the bentleymedia.com website and that will be available from 1600 Greenwich Mean Time today. And we look forward very much to seeing you next time. And it might just involve a plug-in hybrid.